All right, Marco, <clears throat> welcome to the Competencies Without a Classroom podcast. You're a very special guest today, Marco, for a number of reasons, as I'm hoping we're going to talk about in, in today's episode, but you're the first student we've interviewed on this podcast, and it's definitely something that we want to continue doing more of. So thank you for being a trailblazer and thank you for being a standout student. Marco, I'm going to start off this interview the same way I start off every interview. It helps to really give our listeners answers to the most burning questions, the questions that they need answers to, right? So with that, Marco, pineapple on pizza, are you a yes or a no on that one? No, I have to go with no. No. Is there a traditional type of pizza that you do enjoy? Is that, is the pizza as we eat it? You know, as you're eating it here with your classmates, is it's, is that something that is common practice in Brazil or is it a different style of pizza altogether? It's the same idea, but we yeah. usually eat our pizzas with fork and knife. That's actually something that's really different from here. Yeah. Right. Do you ever find yourself eating it with a fork and knife and looking around nobody else's or have you completely? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You're a little young for it, but there's a amazing TV show that I watched a lot growing up called Seinfeld and they have this episode where there's a certain group of people who are eating chocolate bars with a fork and a knife and it's a little different, but that's cool. There'll be a lot of little similarities like that that I'm sure you've already picked up on, right? So hmm. on that note, Marco, why don't you introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you want the listeners to know about you? Well, my name is Marco Suarez. Uh, I'm 15 years old and since I was younger, I always had the passion of learning about technology and how software actually works. So everything that you see on the web and everything you see on your phone, how is all of that done? That was always the question I asked myself. And since I was 10, I was always interested in learning new things. And the first thing I went to learn is web development. So then I started looking into how are websites made and how can we make websites more suitable for the users of nowadays? So I always started enjoying learning new things, started, started off building simple websites. But then at the age of 12, I started looking into actual concepts of programming, which would create the foundation to where I'm at today. So basically, I went all the way from creating simple websites that simply showed red and green text that had no good design yeah. um, to now create an app that I now have launched recently. Yeah. So, and we're definitely going to talk about that as well. Let's just let's take it a step back first and let's let the listeners get to know you a little bit better, Marco. So... Tell me about your journey to Canada. Where did you grow up? How long have you been here? Where in Canada are you? All that fun stuff. Okay, yeah. I grew up in Brazil. Brazil, Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, pretty big country, actually. Uh, yeah. 10 times the population of Canada almost. Yeah. But I grew up there. Uh, I moved in July of 2019 to mm -hmm. Winnipeg, Manitoba in mm -hmm. Canada. I've been here since then. And since and before that, I always was always in Brazil. I um, always lived there. I traveled to a few countries, but I always had my Brazilian culture uh, enrooted in me. Yeah. What's Isabella? I met your sister on a podcast that I was part of recently, and she was talking about one of the uh, traditions in Brazil around New Year's where people will go to the beach and they'll jump into three waves or, or something like that. What's aside from eating pizza with a fork and a knife, what's uh, a fun tradition from back home that you want to introduce to our listeners? Well, I mean, one thing I have to say is the giant barbecues of the families, but right. our barbecues are a bit different. I'm not going to lie yeah. because there's a place actually in Winnipeg called uh, Brazilian Barbecue Carnival okay. that actually serves a really good type of barbecue that shows our traditional style yeah. of it's kind of a buffet where you can ask um, where you just pay once and you can eat as much as as much meat as you want. Yeah. And that is an actual uh, huge tradition that we have in Brazil, uh, along with pizza. We actually do have pizza buffets, nice. and it's something really cool, actually. All right. Yeah. And and is pork a big thing in yeah. Brazilian culture? Yeah, I thought so, right? So there's probably a lot of big barbecues with the, the pig roast and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. right? Really good. Okay, cool. So, Marco, usually on this podcast that we've been interviewing industry professionals, and we, we try to highlight some of the the core competencies of the 21st century skills that they need to be successful in their job so we can introduce them to people like you to see why it's going to be important to be a problem solver and a, and a critical thinker, why it's important to have great communication skills. 
you've already given us a little bit of introspection in, into your world and kind of what you're passionate about, but let's talk about some of those skills. So, you know, you said for at least the last five years, you've been really interested in learning about how these different pieces of software work. So for me, I guess what, what stands out is kind of curiosity. Was there a moment, do you remember, like when you were 10 years old about just wanting to know how it was able to do this or like why, if somebody asked you, why are you interested in learning how websites and software works? Do you know, do you know how to answer that question? Well, the real why was because things changed. I believe this was actually when I started getting interested when I saw, when I got more introduced to YouTube on the web. And I noticed how videos are recommended differently for the different types of users based on what you watch. Right. And they keep track of so much statistics. Mm -hmm. And I got so interested in that, that I wanted to do it myself. And I wanted to learn how everything is actually working because there's so much going on that mm -hmm. sometimes the front, the front end user doesn't really think about, and he shouldn't really, but the back end programmers really need to think about every single detail that goes into it. Right. Okay, cool. So you were, it was YouTube and you're talking about, you're wondering how the video was because from, for a lot of people, right. They may not give it a whole lot of thought. They may not even know that the word algorithm exists. They may just think, oh, that's the video that they served up to me or, oh, that's the search result that I got from typing in those words. But something happened in, in your brain where you said, I want to know why that specific video was queued up to me. So that, that's really interesting. And I do personally believe that curiosity um, is going to be one of the skills that if you can develop will help set you apart from a lot of people. If you have the desire to know why something performs the way it performs, then you're going to ask a lot of smart questions and, and figure out things that other people won't. But, you know, for a lot of people, Marco, they may have just never even asked why. And if they did, they may have not acted on it. So what, what did you do once you figured out that you wanted to learn about how an algorithm was developed or why that video was served up to you? What was your next step as a 10 year old to say, how am I going to figure this out? Well, my next step was actually start searching about it because right. everything nowadays, um, it's interesting because you can find literally almost everything in the world, like any type of course or anything. So I started back in the time code Academy was a hundred percent free. So then I just went into there and there was a course, like learn how to build a website. So then I just started with the basic HTML, CSS which are yeah. the basic tools you need to build a website. So then after that, I started getting more into, let's say JavaScript because JavaScript is what actually makes the website change and mm -hmm. all the scripts, all the things that are going on that are dynamic happen through this. So then I actually just really started searching for it. I was in the bookstore one day and I saw this book about programming. I went and purchased it and started reading through it. It was actually a way higher level. A book, but I actually read it because right. I was so interested and so um, empowered to actually learn that I went all the way through it and just really searching. That's amazing, man. And and all this was happening before you know you even had a high school course about computer science or engineering, right? So no one was telling you to do this. You just wanted to go out and, and do it on your own. I'm sure as much as you're interested and you're passionate about it, some of it may have been difficult, right? Like even uh, myself a few years ago, I started learning about HTML and, and CSS and, and JavaScript. And turns out it's not really for me. This is something that you're a lot more interested than, than I was, but that's okay. Cause we all have our different interests. When, when you're learning this, cause it happened to me a lot. When I was learning, I was actually participating in a course outside of work. So after work in the evenings, a little shop in Toronto that would teach people how to learn the basics of programming. When I got stuck, I had an instructor that I was able to ask, you were doing this on your own. So, you know, you must've got stuck a couple of times, especially early on when you're learning these new concepts, instead of giving up, what did you do to figure out the solution to a problem as it became a problem? Well, as soon as I encountered a problem, the first thing I would do is there's this website called Stack Overflow. Many people may not know about it, but it's basically where most programmers go to yeah. find answers to problems they face. And that's how I actually got into Stack Overflow and actually started learning how the programming environment world actually works. So then I would just copy and paste the error I got, anything that went wrong. And I would just keep looking at the answers of actual professional people that have been working on this for their, for many years. And from then I've been um, learning and adapting 
you know, and I even had someone, the IT technician back in my school, back in my middle school, he was actually always trying to help me too. So I do like a small script over here. He would take a look at it because he had a bit of knowledge of programming. Right. So he would also help me with that too. That's super helpful. How about now at high school? Are you taking any kind of computer science or related courses? Or do you have any kind of mentorship that you can lean into at the high school level? Yep. I'm taking the grade 11 computer science course right now. Nice. And my computer science teacher, he is incredible. Yeah. He, is a, he has been able to really push me to try out new things and give me more challenges because I'm more advanced on computer science. So he's always been pushing me more because, you know, he notices that I really want to learn more and do more and find out new things. So he's mm -hmm. been able to help me with that. It's an important person to have in your life. Let's uh, give him a shout out. What, what's his name? It's Mr. Lawrence Walks. All right. So that's awesome. Very lucky to have a teacher like that. Make sure to give him a, a props next time you're able to. So let's talk about the app that you've developed, Marco. Uh, I don't want to steal your thunder. It's called Math Crack. Tell us, you know, let's start off with what it does and then tell us the why behind you felt building this app was necessary and, and going to add value to other students' lives. Okay. How it works is basically an app that does many types of math problems. Let's just list them. Volume, surface area, area, factorials, permutations, combinations, unit conversion, and much more. Mm -hmm. Basically, it solves all of those for you. It also gives the option for at least the volume and surface area problems. All of them have a detailed explanation, step by step, on how you can learn the formula and solve your problems yourself. But it also has the option of you inputting, let's say, the radius and the height of a cylinder, and it gives you the volume or the surface area. So it's basically a all-in-one smart calculator that's able to solve various types of math problems that the usual calculator can't solve. That's amazing, man. And, and why build this app, right? Like, I'm, I'm sure that there must be other calculator apps out there. Why was there a need for math crack? Well, there was a need because all the other calculator apps, they just did your problems for you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make something that was appealing for teenagers, but also encourage them to actually learn math in a fun way that would be attractive for them to create that bridge between the student and the school. So basically math crack introduces the concept of customization. Basically you have an in-app calculator that you can customize that is different from the native calculator. You can customize the roundness of your buttons, the color of your app, the color mm -hmm. of your calculator, and you have your points. That's something that users are really attracted to when they come into the app because they feel like they are accepted. They're in that environment that they themselves created. So that's something that was missing. And where this idea actually came from is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. I was in grade eight. I was just sitting in math class. A friend of mine, she had this app that did volume and surface area problems. And then only that, it just did those. She showed it to me. She's like, this is incredible. Then I looked at her and I'm like, well, I'll do an app better than that one day. <laughs> and, you know, then I just went with my promise. And since then I've been brainstorming how to create the app and how to actually make something that students like. Not only just to do their math problems, but that they like and that they adopt. Amazing, man. And have you been able to receive from some feedback from some of your peers, some of the students who've been able to use it? Yeah. yeah, they love it because it's incredible because it gives you the answer. But for example, for the volume of the cylinder, it also lets you show work. So it's all that interactive. It has a clean user interface that always the users hit me up and they tell me, wow, I love the interface of how smooth the app actually works and everything. Yeah. And it's something I really focused on. User experience is really the key. Because teenagers nowadays, it's really hard for you to get them connected to an app. You know, let's get TikTok. Why is TikTok so big? Because it's simple to use, but it also has a clean interface. So I wanted to inspire myself based on that. So it's an app that's really easy to use, really simple. It gives you points. It rewards you for using it. And it allows you to solve your map. You combined a lot of important things in, in your first big Showtime app, Margo. I mean, the, I love the personalization element of that. I bet a lot of people haven't thought about that. They just assume that if we build a calculator, they use the calculator. But if I can make the calculator my own and unique to the way I want it to look, then it's a better chance I'm going to come back to it. 
and gamification is huge. You know, that's something that we use within the My Blueprint program as well. Just it's baked into human psychology that people like to get rewarded for completing certain tasks. And it's going to make me want to keep coming back and, and doing more of that. And it's, you know, you hit the nail on the head with the user interface piece, right? Like the, the bar is set high these days in terms of the other apps that are available and that they are beautiful and easy to use and simple. But, you know, a lot of times, and, and it's not true for everyone, when you're a programmer, oftentimes you can become a backend programmer or uh, a full stack programmer. In my experience, between the backend and full stack, they're really good at that part. But when it comes to design, usually that's its own thing, right? You're going to have user experience and, and product people who kind of own the design. Where did you, because you can go to CAD or Code Academy to learn your HTML and CSS, you can read your book about JavaScript, but how did you teach yourself the design and, and the user experience element of all? Well, the design part of it, uh, I started on my own, just creating my own designs because uh, since I, in my whole middle school, I had art class. So I was taught a bit of design concepts. I'm not the best at design. I got to admit, uh, more of the backend person, but a friend of mine actually shout out for him, Marcelo, he go. actually created the concept of the new design of the app and sent it to me. And then I based all of the rest of the design based off of that. So okay. me as a programmer, really the only things I need is a base design, a concept, and I can base the rest of the design off of that. So the color scheme and how round the buttons are supposed to be, where they're supposed to be located and the font sizes, you give me that, I'll be able to build a product. Shout out Marcel. Yeah, I mean, that's teamwork, right? So you're able to figure out what you're really good at and where you need help with and bring it all together, right? Speaking of feedback, were there any moments of failure along the way? Any struggles that you ran into when developing this app from getting it approved in the Play Store to finding a server to host it? Like, there must have been some hiccups along the way. Mm -hmm. Various, actually. <laughs> and one of the largest ones we had was actually back in, let's say, May. May of 2020 was when I decided to revamp the whole app. Hmm. Basically, before that date, we didn't really have a, we had a database, but we didn't have a user structure or hmm. anything that the users could really personalize it. So then I really took some time and I had to change completely the system of the app. And this transition between the old system and the new system was really hard for us because uh, we, I used Google Cloud Platform to do all of the hosting and the database and all these things and setting up all these new things and make it compatible so that the users could have this transition was probably one of the hardest parts and actually the architecture of data because you were having to think about how is the database supposed to be structured so that users can, in real time, customize their app so that it synchronizes with any device they log into. All of these things, you know, yeah. all of these things that come into play and let's say offline support for right. the premium users of the app. You can have offline access. How do you make that possible and synchronizing with the database? You know, all of these things come in play. Yes, and, and good on you, man, for continuing even when you're hitting these these road bumps and, and these speed bumps because they're going to keep happening in your life you're, they're only going to get bigger but it's having the mindset to persevere and, and not get frustrated and seeking help where you need help right have you ever thought mark about so all of this you know you're, you're doing it on your own because you're interested in it and it motivates you is there anything that you've learned from this experience that you've been able to apply to your traditional high school classes well, yeah, I think the one thing is that helping each other. I think creating, let's say, how I make the app, the impact that it will actually have on the students around me and the way they do their work in a collaborative way. Because whenever I wrote down the formulas or everything in the app, it's really like, how are users going to get there? And what are they going to do after? So basically having this apply to myself as in how should I help the student? You know, how is the process of me being able to help the student? and help him do his homework because I'm a fairly good student in math, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and basically ha having this experience of, well, the user users want me to tweak this. Well, shouldn't I also be teaching them this other way in real life? You know, having this really comparison between how people learn in real life and who the app. I think that's huge, man. And I don't know if you're familiar with the, the term project-based learning. Do you guys do any of that at your school or have you heard of it before? Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah. 
Okay. Cause this is kind of like what you're doing, but you're, you're doing it on your own and, and, a perfect scenario in, in my eyes, at least there's project-based learning that's baked in across the education system, because not only have you learned some software development, but you've learned how to reach out to your peers and take feedback and how to iterate on feedback. You've improved your communication skills by having interviews like this, right? You've worked with your sister to create a press release. There's so many different moving parts of this that you've been able to bake into everything with, with one project across multiple disciplines, right? Do you have any, are there any classes you're taking right now that are kind of like that, where they, you know, it may be the English class or it may be math class, but you get to integrate other disciplines or other areas of interest? Well, yeah, English right now is probably my biggest one because our English, are like we're writing an essay right now and we're actually connecting a book that we read to kill a mockingbird with a concept that we are interested in. So a topic that we're interested in. So for example, in my case, I really like politics. So I'm connecting both of like the issues that are present in the book with the issues that are present with the other book I took. So connecting those two. And this is a really good way for, I think, students to learn, especially my age, because I think they should have the freedom to be able to adapt to what they like, but also connect it to a literary context and critical thinking. That's big, man. Yeah. So being able to work within the curriculum, but apply it to something of interest to kind of marry the two is going to, it's going to get a lot more students excited about what they're doing because they're finding a way to connect it to what they're actually interested in. And if uh, you're interested in politics, this is an interesting time uh, to be alive, whether it's what's happening in, in the U S Brazil, and even in Canada, right? There's a lot of stuff going on right now. So that's cool. All right, Mark, let's, let's wrap up with some rapid fire questions. What's a skill that you've developed by building this app that maybe you wish all students were taught as part of high school? I'm going to be honest, essential basic programming, a certain, because this wasn't just because of the app, but it's about my life. I mm -hmm. think kids nowadays, at least since we're moving into a more digital era, should at least be taught basic programming concepts, because that's something that many manual jobs that can be replaced by artificial intelligence or robots are going to be gone in a couple of years. So I think we need to prepare our students to actually adapt and to actually do what they like doing and what they're good at, but also having these technological skills so that they can connect. I agree with that. I think basic, I mean, basic programming, programming in itself is like a language, right? So we, we teach English, we teach Spanish and French and Portuguese. Why not teach basic programming, at least for the person to be able to talk or understand the language of a programmer when they're working with that individual. Or in, in your case, if there's something you're really passionate about, maybe it's not math. Maybe as a student, I'm really interested in interior design. You can build an app that helps people with their interior design needs and connect passions to the digital world that we all live in these days, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about a book, right, To Kill a Mockingbird. Is there one book that you've read? Maybe it's within programming. Maybe it's just something you're interested in that you wish more students would read? Hmm. I'd say Rules of the Game. It's uh, the first book I've read actually to do with uh, programming and creating game development. Okay. But a lot of those skills I learned and from that book actually apply to any type of product, which is uh, the gamifying experience, like you said, and actually how to keep people engaged in a game. But how can you apply that to actual so I, I applied many of those skills to my, for example, the rewarding process, keeping right. users engaged, keeping people sharing the product. So the fundamentals to creating a good product, I believe that that's a book that really helps you have an idea of that. It's a great recommendation. Have you heard of a book called Hooked by Nir Eyal? No. Uh, that's one that I'm going to get you to Google afterwards. It's called Hooked, H-O-O-K-E-D. His last name's A-L, uh, E-Y-A-L. We'll link to it in the show notes for anyone listening to this, but I think as someone building uh, programs, it kind of taps into the psychology of what gets people hooked uh, to these different, whether it's a social network or game or application they're using and triggers to get them to keep coming back. And when used in the right way, uh, it can have a very positive effect on the application, but in the wrong hands can do some very bad things. So I know you're going to use them in the right way. A couple of last questions for you, Margo. Aside from your computer science uh, class that you're taking right now, what's uh, what's a favorite class you've had so far in high school? Ooh, 
that's a hard one mm. but i'd say probably i'd say in between english and social studies okay. because since i'm really interested like i said in politics and history i think social studies really fits into that but also english because it makes you think about let's say what happened in history but connect that to literary context so i really like that uh, i really like those two because i think you learn of the past and you learn how to innovate looking at the past and the mistakes people did in the past and where you can do difference to innovate. It's a great diversified set of skills that you're building there. Have you thought much about life after high school? Do you want to keep building your own things? Do you want to get some experience at a more established company? Sounds like computer programming is probably something you're going to be interested in indefinitely uh, after high school. Do you know what you're going to do? Or have you yeah. thought about it? Yeah, I have actually thought a lot about it. I want to go to high university, take a major actually in political science. Cool. And then a minor in computer science. And basically after university, I want to take a couple of years to continue working on my own thing, on my own company and improving the products before then going into politics. I really want to do politics as a career in the future. And because I believe that it's going to be the ultimate way I'm going to be able to reach out people and make a change because what happens is I see a lot of politicians not really aggregating a lot of value into technology and how technology can actually improve our lives so I think we need more people who have a higher knowledge of technology and programming inside of politics to actually improve the systems that our governments are using improve the tools that our students are using and do the best so that we can all improve as a society and continue innovating investing in new projects, you know, having more government initiatives for students to learn, having mm -hmm. updated software, all of these things, and actually helping the students learn through technology, I think is a big thing that needs to be in this. You got my vote, man. Uh, <laughs> what, Marco, what, what's one, what's a parting thought you have for all the other high school students listening to this? And, and if that's too broad, maybe think about why you think it's so important that students become lifelong learners? Well, I believe students should become lifelong learners because honestly, in high school, you have time. It's probably the time in your life where you can try out the most of things that you really want to and not really regret it because, you know, you really have a chance to try out new things. This app that I built is a way of me learning because every mistake you do in high school, I believe, it's a time for you to learn. It's going to be a long, la a lifelong experience for you. And I think that's where a lot of students are missing out that I actually observe. A lot of students should really value, I think, the time they have available now to actually learn new things, try out new skills, and improve them in themselves so that they can actually be benefited in the future. Hang on to that little bit of wisdom, Margo, because you nailed it on the head and, and it's not just a high school thing. You know, I, I wish more people thought about life that way, that it's easier when you're high school because, yeah, you got a bit more time and you maybe have a few less responsibilities depending on your scenario where you can go for that thing. And if it fails, there's not going to be too many things that happen as a result of it. You're only going to learn from that, but you need to keep that mentality as you grow through uh, life. You know, I'm, I'm 30 years old now and I still think about things like that. You know, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to have learned from it. And the next time I try the next thing, I'll have that in my, the back of my head. So I'll be able to do it that much better. All right. So uh, Marco, take us home. Tell us uh, where people can download math crack. You can download it both at the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So you can just search up Math Crack, Math and Crack all together. Search it up. It will be the first one that appears on both uh, Android and iOS. So you can just search it up and you can find it there. You heard it from Marco. Go to your App Store, find Math Crack, download it, leave a nice review, leave some feedback for Marco because he wants to hear it. Marco, I can't thank you enough for taking the time, man. Keep thinking the way you're thinking. And again, you'll, you'll have my vote when you're ready to run for whatever it is you want to run for. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks, Marco.